And it's Friday morning, folks. I'm Jewel, and this is a J7409 Tropical Update. Today, of course, is Friday, the 30th of August, 2019. If you into the weather, if you're trying to keep up with tropical updates on Dorian as well as other tropical systems and weather in general, please don't forget to subscribe, click my bell to ensure you get all the latest forecast, watches, warnings, and tropical updates as soon as I can get them out to you. I would appreciate it very, very much. Now, I wish I had some good news to tell you this morning, but let's get going. I will have a full tropical update after 8 p.m. this morning. After 8 p.m. this morning, it's at some point before lunch, between 8 and lunchtime, Right now, I'm just going to run down some things that I need to go over with you guys. And also, I will not be putting out a general weather forecast, the weather you need to know today. I don't have time, folks. So here we go. Here's Dorian. This morning, the winds are picking up 105 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure, 979 millibars. 29.8 north, 69.1 west is the location. It's moving. See how it's slowing up a little by little. Right now, it's moving northwest at 12 miles per hour. And I've talked about these systems that were coming off the coast, oh, what, over a week ago, and now one of them is showing up over here. And let's see, this is disturbance number one. It's right now just a tropical wave, okay? But I'm going to show it to you. Moving westerly from the coast of Africa, some development of this system is possible early next week over the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. There's nothing going to form in two days, five days low right now at 20%. It's not only that one. And that's the bigger one that I said I thought would develop into a bigger storm. There's two, so hold on. Now, this is run up to the 8th of September on Sunday, the 8th of September. The one that's showing up in the National Hurricane Center is here now. At this point, this is looking like a tropical storm, a tropical storm. It does have some uh, wing, wind and wind gust in it. This is the sustained winds in this one now, and the wind gust, you can see it's trying to build, but the isobars are not as tightly compacted as the second one that's coming off. Now, look at the wind gust in this one, 96 miles per hour already. It's just left the coast. But it's looking like, if we move the map over, these are going to be traveling to the north of the islands. Now, this could very well change. It's too far out. Too far out. I just want to stick this in everybody's ear. They are out there, okay? And they are going to do something, whether they strengthen or whether they die. What I would do and what I'm going to do when I prepare cert certain things, I'm not taking my stuff down right away, folks. Because this is just within days of time. And as you can see, the Florida coast is right over here. These things are coming up somewhere over in this area. This is what it looks like now. I'm not saying the east coast of Florida is going to get hit again by no means. But I'm saying, you see them folks, they are there. Be aware. At this point, it doesn't really matter what model you choose to use, whether it's the European model or the GFS model. Some, they're off a little bit in timing of when things may happen and maybe strength just a little here or there, but they're pretty much in sync. So this is this morning, and I'm just going to turn this on, and I am going to tell you guys, it's looking like maybe probably more than likely a Monday night landfall for Hurricane Dorian. That's what it's looking like. Now, it could change. I'm just trying to get you up to speed, okay, and it will still be a Cat 4, and the winds are going to still increase, I'm going to show you all that, I want to, this isn't for fear, this is to make you guys realize something, you know, back, I believe it was in the 1920s, there was a 
hurricane that went over Lake Obachoki. Well, this is looking more and more like this is possibly going to go over Lake Obachoki or in the vicinity of Lake Obachoki today. Now, in that hurricane, over 2,500 people died. Well, just think about that. Back in 1920, the storms are much stronger now than they used to be. So, please keep this in the back of your head and mind. Now, I'm showing you this right now also because Georgia, South Carolina, and all the way up to my area, yes, everybody's going to get something. Now, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. I'm going to cut it off, speed it up just a little bit. You can see how the barometric pressure keeps falling down to 28.52. This is uh, Sunday afternoon at this point. I'm thinking Sunday night sometime, so I'll run it up to 11 p.m. Should be getting a lot closer. This is the European model. I'm going to show you both the European and the GFS. We'll click back and forth. Now, this has got Monday. We're going to move it up some. And here we go. See, it looks like it's took a more southerly turn. And look at that pressure, 28.25. All right, this is Monday on the European model around 10 a.m. We're going to click over to the GFS model right quick if it will get over there. And I'm going to show you. Here's a GFS model. It still has it out to sea, but generally in the same area. So potato, potato, it doesn't matter. Pressure isn't quite as low. This is 29.5. Uh, the GFS is showing the intensity not quite as much, but neither one of these models are intensity models, folks. So, you know, we have to go by the intensity models. It's not going to matter really which model you go by. It's give maybe 100 miles either way the same track at this point. Skip back over to the European model right quick, and I need to show you guys something. We're going to move this as fast as we can. I don't want to make this too long. This is 8 p.m. Monday, and it, it's got it coming in Monday night, just like I was talking about, okay? But we're going to get the coordinates from the National Hurricane Center to see all these things. The main point of me showing you this, I think it will be a little stronger winds now where it says Category 1. And anyone that is in the where the storm comes in for at least 100, maybe a little more, 150 miles, is going to be devastation. That's all I know. But everybody up here, this is the main thing, what I want to show you right now. We'll get back to Florida in just one moment. You can see it moving on along. This is Wednesday at 11 a.m., taking that northerly turn, kind of like half of it out, half of it in. And you can see it's moving towards Georgia and up to South Carolina. That's my main thing of showing you this. Now, the isobars have fell apart some now. I'm going to take this uh, pressure granite map off, but the pressure's still low, still low, 29.16, and I'm going to blow this up just a little bit if I can for you, move the map over so you can see the area better. There's Jacksonville, Florida. There's Savannah. You see the area. I don't have to take time and tell everybody where you live, what you might get, or whatever. This is the rain and the thunder. Sustained winds at this point. Just at this time, they're out in the water, but they will circle around. You know how it goes. The sustained winds at this time are 51 miles per hour, and the wind gust is looking like if you're anywhere along this coastline, you're going to pick this up right here. That's 86 mile per hour. I think it's actually a little higher than that. Might not be. Let me check right quick. Now, around 86 miles per hour. So, this is a very still powerful storm. And it's still up in the air. It's still up in the air of what it actually might track. It's looking like, though, that second high that I told you had to converge with the other high. It is probably going to do that late this afternoon. It could change. 
but you see it kind of intensifies as, as it goes along here because some of this is so close to the edge, it's unreal. South Carolina, everybody up here, everybody up here. You see the areas. I don't have to read them out to you. You know where you live and what it looks like. My goodness gracious, let me run this back just a second. Let's go back to Friday. Here we go. Now, I'm going to put it on the rain, okay? This is another thing for Florida. All my Floridian friends, the rain's going to be awful. Now, this is the rain as it's coming up. One thing for sure, everybody's going to get some rain out of this. And at this point, this is the European model. Let's click over just to show you guys what the GFS is looking like. It should have it. See, I told you the timing was a little different. Well, it is. That's what we got to watch, okay? And if it nudges a little further offshore or nudges a little more inland. But would you look at this rain coming over me right now? All that white, my goodness gracious. And the path is not that much difference between the European model or the GFS model right now. It's just the timing, maybe the strength a little bit. It's not worth arguing over people or worrying about. Nobody needs to worry about anything. Everybody needs to clear your head, take a deep breath, and prepare. I do believe this will be tropical storm stuff, high-end tropical storm stuff with possible hurricane wind gusts. This is Friday at 7 p.m. by Saturday morning around 7 a.m. It should be up in my neck of the woods and by Saturday night, hopefully, moving on off the coast up in this area, bringing rain actually up into New England. As you can see here on the tracking map right now this morning, the hurricane watches are all up for all of the islands of the Bahamas. This will change and be warnings later today, I am sure. And probably some hurricane watches are going to start. We're going to start to see them pop up around for the Florida area coming up real soon in the near future. I told you I thought the winds were going to intensify. and Yes, look at here. 140 mile per hour winds right in here. That's a, still a category four. We've got to get up to 157 miles per hour to be a category five. But you can see how the winds are going to jump up. Looking like, remember I told you I thought it would stall maybe right when it got around the coast. It may, it may not. It's looking like now maybe it won't. It will just go on in and maybe drop down to at least 130 when it goes inland. So let's uh, check out where these areas are located. Now, according to these coordinates that are here from the National Hurricane Center at Cat 4, it should be 26.9 north, 80.1 west, and that would have it coming in somewhere up here around the Jupiter area and Juno Beach. We'll have to wait and see if this pans out. Like I say, folks, this just gives you general ideas. It don't matter where you live on the Florida coast if this thing's coming in within hundreds of miles from you. You're going to know it. This is what this is looking like now this morning for a come in. But still, you can see West Palm is to the south. You're, it's not going to make that much difference. We have, as we move northward up here, you can see the different little towns, Limestone Creek, Jupiter Inlet Colony. And it's not road and stone, Palm Beach Gardens, Lake Park, Riviera Beach. It's not road and stone that's going to come in here. It could come in mile, hundreds of miles either way, north or south of this right now. This is just an estimate. Next time we look, it will probably change. But one thing that hasn't changed is this. Now, inland, inland, Category 1, the uh, coordinates 28.1 north, 81.4 west, it is still in this same area, very same area for a Category 1 hurricane to occur, and that is in the Point Siena area of Florida. There's Point Siena. I hope I pronounced it right. If I didn't, I'm tired, people. Give me a break, okay? But as you can see, we have Winter Haven over to the west. 
we got Kissimmee up to the north. And this is making a lot of sense now, as we just saw where the other place looking like it may come in as everything seems to come together a little more each day, slowly but surely. Kissimmee was to the north of the area where it looked like it may come in. Also, and then when we move down south, we have Highland Park. We have all of these little places down here. And I think you guys may get a little more stronger winds than you actually think all the way down to Sebring, Avon Park, all these little places right in here. So we're going to wait and see. This is not road in stone, but everybody, please be aware. The exact track, I cannot say this enough. None of this is road in stone. It's still up in the air as to where it may actually come in. But wherever it does come in, it really doesn't matter. Up and down the seacoast for miles surrounding it, you need to pay attention because where it does come in, there will be total devastation if it stays the way that it is. Now, this is the rain category. Now, this will probably increase some. Well, I know it will, but this is more or less like today out around the Bahamas. Look, that's 15, 20 inches of rain. You can see this rain is going to go all the way up to the coast, and this graph will change as days go by, and this will intensify more and more along these areas. So please keep that in mind. On this map, we've got anywhere from 1 to 2 inches all the way up to 20 inches of rain. Now I'm going to end up this uh, update for this time. Like I say, I'll have a more lengthy one coming out at some point this morning. This was to more or less let everybody know in Georgia, South Carolina, and the North Carolina coast. You do need to be on the outlook for whatever may be coming their way. I will keep you posted. We're going to leave with these key messages. One thing I've been worrying about is a storm surge, and I've been wondering about it in great detail. Well, here's the messages this morning. I'm sure they'll come out with a storm surge map pretty soon. Number one, the hurricane watch is now in effect from the northwestern Bahamas where the risk of light-threatening storm surge and hurricane force winds this weekend will occur, and it has continued to increase. Now, the residents in that area of the Bahamas you should make sure you execute all of your hurricane plans and listen to the advice given by the local emergency officials. That not only goes for Bahamas, folks. I'm telling you, please check in with your local officials. Keep abreast with your local weather, whether it be TV, radio, or NOAA radio, or the National Weather Service radio. Please keep up with your local stuff, okay? and the National Hurricane Center. Now, number two, there's an increasing likelihood of a prolonged period of hazardous weather conditions that could last for a couple of days in parts of Florida early next week. Number three, the risk of life-threatening storm surge along portions of the Florida East Coast has increased, although it is too soon to determine where the highest storm surge will occur. The risk of devastating hurricane force winds along the Florida East Coast and Peninsula early next week has also increased. Although it is too soon to determine where the strongest winds will occur, residents should have their hurricane plans in place now. Know if they are in a hurricane evacuation zone and listen to the advice given by the local emergency officials. Regardless of the exact track of Dorian, don't concentrate on that, folks. Heavy rains are expected, and they will occur over portions of the Bahamas and Florida and elsewhere in the southeastern United States this weekend, well into the middle of next week, and I'm telling you, maybe even into actually the weekend of ne this, not this weekend, but next weekend. So, folks, please be safe. Anyone who wants to help me out reporting live when I have live shows, when this thing gets closer to coming into the coast of Florida, please click show more, scroll down, you'll see my email address, drop me a note with your phone number. And then I'll be getting back up with you in just a, a few hours probably, but I'll say maybe a day or so, okay? 
I got to get all my stuff together. I love you guys. Stay safe. God bless each and every one of you. Peace, love, and kindness to all. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to share this information.